Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up light pipes in Keyshot so you can effectively bend light along a path from one location to an entirely different one. A light pipe is simply a piece of material that allows us to control or move light along a non-linear path. In this example here, you can see that by the time the light escapes this tube, it is actually moving in the opposite direction it was originally being emitted. A common use case for light pipes is to redirect the light coming from an LED that is surface mounted on a printed circuit board. In this example on screen, you have some LEDs on a PCB and this black light pipe is changing the direction so that they shine at a 90 degree angle. Now I know in this first example I showed you, I made it sound like we could bend light, but that's not exactly what's happening. Let me show you what's going on in this other diagram. In this case, this blue thing represents the light pipe and the orange arrow and lines represent the direction light is moving. Essentially, thanks to something called total internal reflection, the light is being reflected many times off the inner surface of the light pipe until it eventually leaves the light pipe. This is what allows us to guide light along a curvy path. Now, if you wanna follow along with me in Keyshot, you can download this model and project file from the file vault on my website. I'll link it up down below. Now, once you open up the project file called light pipe demo, you should see this gray box. And when we rotate it around, you'll see some stuff in the back side of it. I'll go into performance mode so we can see this a little better. Now there's a white tube called pipe sleeve. So I'll turn that off. There's a blue tube called light pipe. We'll turn that off. And there's a black cylinder called light. We'll turn that off as well. Let's double click that yellow disc and change it from diffuse to area light. Now we don't see any light coming from here because we're still in performance mode. So let's turn that off. And you'll notice the light is super bright. Let's bring the power down to 100 lumen. And I'll also mention this is a very small model, so that's why 100 lumen looks so bright in this case. I also wanna turn off apply to back of geometry since we only need light moving out from the front of this disc. Back in our scene tab, we'll turn on the light enclosure and it's gonna look like a small flashlight. The next thing we wanna do is put in material on our light pipe. So I've turned on the light pipe and we need any sort of refractive transparent material on here for this to work. I'll change it from diffuse to dielectric. And there's two main materials we'll explore. We're gonna look at the dielectric material as well as the cloudy plastic. They give some different results, so that's what I wanna show you those for. The next thing in order to see this work well, we wanna do is uh, hide this box. So I'll select the box and turn it off. And I want to go to the environment and turn the brightness down to 0.1. Let's double click on our dielectric and make sure it's white because if we have it any other color, it's gonna darken it a little bit. So let's make sure this is just a white piece of piping. Now we do, if we look at the end of this, we can start to see some little dots of light trying to escape. If we go to our lighting tab, we should see that we're in basic mode. The reason we don't see the light coming out of here is because we don't have enough ray bounces. So let's try doubling them from six to 12. Now you see more light trying to escape. Let's double it again to 24. And now we almost have full light coverage. But if we start to rotate our angle, you'll see we get some more black areas. To increase the light coming out, we need to increase the ray bounces. Now this isn't actually making it brighter. What this is doing is it's including the number of times light can be bounced within this tube to escape. And so if we change this from 24 to 48, we should see we get more light coverage. The next thing I wanna do is take a look at this material. I mentioned earlier that a cloudy plastic could work as well. So let's go ahead and turn this into a multi-material. Let's go ahead and duplicate this material and we'll just change it from dielectric to cloudy plastic. And what this is gonna do is basically be similar to dielectric, but you're gonna have all these particles inside the tube that are making the light scatter within it. So you can think of that almost as internal roughness or cloudiness. And I'm gonna set this from 0.1 to say 0.6 or something like that. By increasing the cloudiness, we make it more of an opaque like material. Now you'll notice as a result of this, the whole tube is going to essentially glow. That's because there's particles inside here that the light's bouncing off of. We can also make this even brighter yet if we need to by changing this cloudiness color to white. Of course, you could change it to any other color if you needed to, but that's changing the color of the light within it, not the light source and not the actual color of the material. So just consider that. I would typically keep this in the grayscale realm and just probably to white if you wanna maximize your light transmission. Okay, there's not much else we need to do here. I just wanted to call this out. One thing you might be able to get away with since this is cloudy plastic is actually using fewer 
ray bounces. So let's bring this back down to say 24. You'll notice the end of this still looks pretty well lit. If we go and switch this to the dielectric version, you see we have these black inclusions here. If we go back to the cloudy plastic version, it fills out completely. So if you're looking to optimize your results and reduce your ray bounces, you're going to want something like a cloudy plastic. Now, if this is too dark for you, I think you know this, but we can all always go back into the light and just increase this. So if I go from 100 to 200, now we're back to a full disc here. Now, what happens if we bring our box back into the scene? So with our box turned on, there are a few more issues you might run into that I want to address. So far in our lighting tab, all we've done is increase our ray bounces to get the light to move through the light pipe. But let's say you're rendering a scene and you need to have caustics enabled or you need to be in product mode. You'll notice a few things happen when I'm in product mode. First of all, we get white fireflies all over the place, especially around the back here. Also what happens when we turn on caustics? Maybe you need to render a scene with caustics. Well, that's only going to further exacerbate the issue. This is a big mess. There are a few things we can do to work on this. And first of all, if you can and you want to, you can turn off ground illumination. So if we turn that off, the ground plane will not show any noise. So that's one thing that's helpful. As I showed earlier, we didn't actually need caustics enabled to make the light move through the light pipe. However, you'll notice, let's zoom in here. When I turn on caustics, it does indeed get quite a bit brighter and a quite a bit more filled out. So you may be able to get away with lower ray bounces when you introduce caustics. The reason I don't default to suggesting you use caustics is because caustics not only can take a long time to render, but do you see the splotchy patterns that are happening here from the caustics? It takes an incredibly long time for Keyshot to resolve those and for them to smooth out. So long that in my opinion, it's better to increase ray bounces before jumping straight into turning on caustics. But we can kind of curb this issue with something else I've included that you might remember from earlier on, and that's called the pipe sleeve. When I turn this on, you'll notice all the light leak that was happening in the back of this box basically disappears. And when I look around the front, you can see that we still have our light coming out of the end of the light pipe the way we want. Now, if we go back into our lighting tab, we could probably get away with some ground illumination. However, you're still going to see some noise and caustics on the ground here, but we have yet to even take advantage of something called denoise. Let's turn off our light sleeve or pipe sleeve so we can see what denoise does in this case. When we go to the image tab, we can enable denoise. We can increase the denoise blend and that's going to make the areas that have the white noise or hot pixels, it's gonna blur them. So if we increase that all the way, it's gonna smooth them out. The downside is you're gonna lose texture detail if you have any textures in here. So you wanna find the number that starts to smooth things out, but doesn't make everything look too smooth or doesn't lead to a loss of detail. So I'm gonna go about 0.75 here. The other thing we have is a firefly filter. So if I turn the denoise down and just increase the firefly filter, it starts to get rid of those white, bright, hot pixels. The downside to this is, you might have guessed it, but if we increase the firefly filter and it thinks the end of the light pipe is showing fireflies, it's going to get rid of that as well. So here's what I would recommend. Find a good balance here between the firefly filter. So I'll go about 0.7 or 0.75 and I'll do about 0.75 on the denoise. So here we have the best of both worlds and we can go ahead and use that pipe sleeve to really clean up the light leak and ensure that we have a pretty clean result overall with plenty of light coming out the end of this pipe. And just as a quick reminder, if we need to, we can always go back. Here we've got 14 ray bounces. I can bump this up to say 24 and that should give me a pretty even clean coverage. The last thing I'll mention is there is one more part that I turned off here, the lens. If we turn that on, we could set this to cloudy plastic and let's increase that cloudiness and let's reduce that transparency distance. That's gonna give us kind of more of an orange lens at a 0.5 maybe and, and I'll go to the cloudiness of 0.8 and now we have this kind of orangey glow and we can take this cloudiness color and make it brighter like a bright white. And right there, if we let this res up, it should clean up fairly well. Notice it's quite a bit darker. So we could need to increase our overall light brightness, which we could do, maybe even 300. The last thing I'll suggest, depending on what your setup is, you may have better results going into GPU mode at any point that may give you faster resolution here. 
and I'll just let this sit and cook for a minute to see how this ends up looking. But at this point, I've run through all the major considerations that I can currently think of that should help you take a light pipe and actually direct light in Keisha as you would in the real world, obeying the laws of physics while still having some art direction and control over the situation. 